What's sure. that blue post? Does that go away? They put a hydraulic jack so they can get the floor level. That's exactly right. Does that yeah. go away over time? Or? No, we'll take it away. That's just that's that's uh, that's the set cruise. That's the set cruise. So this is. Uh, you remember when we were walking around upstairs and uh, we were looking at the floor and one of the floors was off? We came down here and jacked it up straight. Right. So that's how that's how you get it. That's how you so get it straight tight, because you can you, you can have down. deviations in just the wood, yeah. just the wood, you know. So um, uh, these are all pretty well plumb and level, but you're always, but you're gonna want to check it again, make sure it's plumb and level. These are gonna be bolted on top. But then you got to anchor them down at the bottom. Okay. Tap, just tap on them down, or you hammer bolt them. So one of those ones with the 22 shells with the nail, okay. and they shoot right in, and then you bend it over. And then um, a lot of times, what you're going to want to do here, you know, these are your, these are your, uh, you know, these are to extend it up to height. So a lot of times, though, uh, the building inspector is going to want, they're going to want this to be taken out, and then you're going to uh, hit this with uh, the threads with a grinder. Once this is good and plumb and level and you're good, you take this out, you hit that with a little bit of your uh, grinder, and then the threads, you'll never be able to take it out. Okay. Or you can do a tack weld, whichever is easier for your contract. Don't, don't you over time, because of the wood, whatever, don't you have to send them once in a while? No, no, the reason, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't have to do, just like the wall, you wouldn't have to extend your wall. This is gonna be just as uh, rigid. And the reason why the uh, building inspectors are gonna want you to do that is because, um, What's happened is sometimes homeowners will go, you know, what would be nice here, maybe it's not you, maybe you sell it and someone buys it and they go, you know, I really don't want these here, let's take these out. And the house is gonna have structural issues. So that would prevent someone from, uh, from doing that. Yeah, this is a temporary jack, uh, which you bring in when you are trying to level up the floors. If you've got a little deviation on your, on your rib joist there on the marriage wall, Sometimes the floors are like this, right? And you're going to jack it up on the one side, and then you're going to bolt it together. And if you get up here, you can see those are your through bolts there, okay. and every other pattern. So is that what keeps it from going yeah. back again, or is yeah. it like floor, floor, floor? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when we're all when we're all final uh, with it as well, we're going to put uh, we're going to add extra locks on each cavity. We overdo the locks. We do two per cavity, just because you're going to have some drying out. Uh, settling process oh, yeah. in the house and the much as much as we can keep it from uh, having any movement and this becomes sort of basically one unit one module two modules become almost one unit there uh, with your with your through bolts that's what we want to see happen it, it but, did find it interesting when they brought the A and the B together how you know to get it as close as they can yeah what they can do what they can't do well so you're so you set the one down yeah and then the second one you're gonna kind of come in like this and you're gonna you're gonna set the outside, and then you're gonna bring it in nice and tight, just like that. And then, and then they have to the bag and get the yeah. You can use your come alongs to make sure they're they're perfectly square on the foundation. So where this is a ten foot basement, it's yep. your ten foot core wall. You've got glass blocks looking out that way. You've got uh, a window, a man door, and your your two overhead doors. And then you have these vertical support columns running down. These are all dictated by <clears throat> the modular load points of the house. So the factory mod prints are going to dictate where your footers are going to be. Now we've got a port floor under which, uh, I'm not sure, did he do a strip footing or did he do spot footings? Then he did spot So you can either do strip footing or spot footings. He did, he did spot footing footings. Those are going to get inspected by the inspector before they pour the floor. Uh, sometimes you're gonna, they're going to want this set on the footing and then the house set, and then you pour the floor after, so they're, they're lodged in place, but a lot of times they don't require that, and you set it on top of the floor, and that's, that's fine too. It's uh, two ways to do the same, to achieve the same result. But uh, like you said, here's the electric uh, connects. These are called the cross connects. So you have box, box A and box B, and then your electrician opens these up, and they, they connect these, and they're, it's a plug and play unit, right? So. Here's the, here's the connection point here. Seven goes into seven. And so it's a very straightforward uh, plug and play process. You can see your, this is your 200 amp breaker panel. Uh, your electrician's gonna uh, you know, cut these vinyl ties where it's, this would shift on the carrier. We're gonna drop this down, 
they're going to set this, he's going to set this against a, you know, a plywood panel, mount it there, probably have an outlet there, and then depending on where your furnace and your water tank is, you're going to collect it all in that. won't be a water tank, it'll be tankless water heater. Tankless water heater. Here's your grounding rod, and uh, this is this for your well, this is kind of water coming out of your well. The septic has to go out somewhere by the... He'll punch a new hole for that. I think he's going to put it down over there. No, he's putting it here. Oh, he's putting it here? So it's all gravity fed down. So he's going to punch out here, and then he's going to go, so your drops then will... Here's your kitchen, here's your bath. You have a bath, you're going to have a bath on the second floor. So they'll, what, he'll, what he'll end up doing is he'll, he'll take your plumber, will take your drops, come around, and then pitch it out down, right. so everything flows gravity fed like that. Yeah. And they're worried that anything in the basement was going to drain. It's like no, there's nothing in the basement draining. Right. It's all up the stairs, so it's all got a good pitch to it. To yeah. Basically. We don't need a pump or anything. At the time they're talking about the septic system being having the leach field being had to be above to get away from the uh, city water. Yeah. But luckily it's not. It's all down there, so it's all gravity fed. Simple. That's the restrictions with the New York watershed that you were talking about, which has severe restrictions. They're yeah. very particular about what what happens with What's sanitary. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, so I guess the drop probably would just come across this way. That would probably be a shorter drop now. Yeah, a shorter run because that's you know that's one of the areas where prices have escalated so much is in plumbing and HVAC concrete wood the lumber has settled down a little bit in cost but your your travel and your fuel and your diesel everything is still pretty high labor has gone up tremendously <laughs> you know good for them but you know yeah. the spending power has gone down so it's it's all sort of uh, Inflationary situation. It's all obviously changing on me within the last six months. Exactly. We're trying to settle things in. So when we came in with a contract, though, we fixed that price for you. Yes. So you could go through your loan process and have some surety from us. That price was locked in. The only the only minor change was the one go uh, when the outside door went well, up the price. So you spent the money. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't not, your, not your price. price. <laughs> Someone said, you know, Jeremy. Every time I see you, the price goes up. I said. Well, you, well, hang on. You're the one who keeps adding, right? You know, adding changes, adding windows, adding doors. But in fact, the base price was fixed, okay. which is uh, which is good. So we can do that through a certain time period. We can't fix it forever, of course. You know, not for years, but usually it's an, a 90-day rolling time period. I think you started the construction in February, maybe. Okay, and we locked yeah. it in since since February through to September. Well, through um, uh, July August, or something. July, really. When you finished it, then yeah. you just sat there. Yeah. Why yeah. I was doing, twiddling my thumb, so to speak. Right. So that was about, about a six month uh, lock. So that's good. Okay. So that's good. And then some of the things that you were asking about. So this is, so you've got your drop here for your, this is your master tile shower. This is your big tile shower here. You've got your drop here for your uh, drain, which your plumber can collect and send out that way. And then you're saying, what is uh, what is this pipe here? This is the pick point. See how it comes there, and it goes out there, and it's kind of a bridge to nowhere. And that's where, when this when this box is sitting on a carrier, uh, and the crane we're about to pick it up, we're feeding through that line with our uh, cables, and then we can pick the boxes up. So to finish, you can just leave them; they're not going to hurt you, or you can cut them off and throw them out. Um, you know, if you don't like the look of them. And, and then, then it may be good for me to put screens or something over those holes so animals don't come in through that hole. So this, this perimeter uh, uh, from the top of your wall to the bottom of your floor deck, typically what we'll do is we'll do a spray foam blocker. So you come in and you can order from any insulation company or you can go to the hardware store, your contractor go to the hardware store and get a froth pack. It's basically like, you know, the, the small cans. It's like that, but bigger. And has a big gun on it, and they're you know six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a big froth pack would probably do this whole thing. And you know you gotta have a respiratory system and whatnot. If you've done it before, that's easy. So if your contractor's done it, have him do it. But then what you do is you're gonna spray from this. This will be after all your penetrations, after your trades have completed their work. At the end, you're gonna spray from the top of the concrete up to the bottom of the deck, and that's gonna give you a full one inch uh, uh, spray foam sealant as well as your insulation barrier. Is that from the inside or outside? From the inside. So you'll see it, you'll see it, and we have a bunch of videos like that. Uh, you'll see that spray foam in there. 
you can do it like that, or you can uh, you can seal it with, uh, with a, a, the tuba cock and then put bats in. But uh, we find it's just easier to do the froth pack. And what, the, the reason why it's important is because you've got this rim joist that's sitting on top of the sill plate, which is sitting on top of your wall. And so all wood has some little deviations in it. And when you do a blower test on this, which tests the envelope uh, efficiency, the efficiency of the envelope, you'll always have leakage all the way through because wood always has a little deviation. And that froth pack is just gonna seal it right up. You've got the boots from the factory. So your uh, contractor for your furnace can come set your furnace and come up with his trunk line, put his trunk line right down end to end and come off with his heat supply into the factory provided boots. Yeah. So those are all ready for you. You can see all your electrics are already roughed in. These are blockers. These uh, in between the floor joists, those are blockers which provide rigidity on the structure so you don't have any bounce on your floor. Um, there's your stairs over here coming back this way. So this is what we were talking about before, which you were saying with a 10 foot wall, if you're going to come down your straight stairs because it's so high, you're going to end up hitting the wall. So you got to come down and then there'll be a platform probably around here and you can put stairs down this way and then stairs down this way, whichever you prefer. I guess probably you do that way because you got your car here, right? Something, probably something going, of that nature? We're probably going that way for the doors there and we're grinding them, like I say, put lawnmowers or whatever. Okay, so you, you can come out that way. Yeah, look at the stairs is here. You look back and there's not enough room to put a stand. I see, okay. And there's not much I can do in the floor plan. If I move the stairs that way, then right. I'm losing the office or whatever. Right, right, okay. So, so, so we've, some, we've sometimes seen you could come down and you could go both ways if yeah. you wanted.